Hi, you'll love today's tutorial. All of these desk lamps are designed and made by Year 7 students from Tangara School for Girls in Cherrybrook. When I heard about this project, I was amazed that each year the girls study a new design influence like Memphis or Bauhaus to inspire their work. The girls use a laser cutter to form the acrylic or the timber parts and I'm sure you'll agree the results are stunning. Shout out to Miss Dirks and the talented girls from Tangara. I'm Glennie D. In today's tutorial, I'm walking you through step by step how to draw a standard desk lamp. You'll be able to use it as a scaffold to draw your own amazing designs. Here's the standard lamp design that we'll be drawing together. And here, the same skills are being used to draw a different looking design. I'd like to make you the expert in drawing lamps. In this diagram, I'm going to show you the order of the parts as we're going to draw them. Let's start off with the base sitting on a table and then the lower arm. Notice how it's, we're drawing it vertical. It's going to make it easier for us. And this one is horizontal. Anything vertical or horizontal is much easier to draw in isometric. Our design will be using solid timber, but you could easily draw this thinner if you're using acrylic, or draw lines down the middle for plywood, or you could square the ends if that's what you'd like in your design. Our drawing today is half scale or half real size. For instance, the 70 millimeters of the base would actually be 140. We'll start off by drawing the base, then the lower arm, the upper arm, and you could easily change this design by adding a second lower arm or taking away material to improve the design. This is much the same design, but with a few small changes. For instance, Notice the arms are based on a small circle at one end and large circle at the other. And I've repeated that for the upper arm as well. I've used the same mount, but for the base, to accent the switch, I've changed the shape of the base a little. This is a sectional view. It's great for showing how the parts fit together. An imaginary cutting line, or section line through there, shows me the shade could be an upside down upcycle bowl and there is the mount cut through and it shows that I've got a bolt and nut holding it all together. I've repeated the theme of the two circles for the shape of the base as well. At first draw your lampshades facing straight down because it's easier but then with a little practice you'll be able to imagine them rotated or swiveled I've changed the design of this base simply by adding a chamfer or a slope on the edges. I've doubled up the thickness of the laser cut arms. And I've also removed some material from the middle using a triangular shape. Here I've made a version of the classic Bauhaus design, the banker's desk lamp. I've used a flat piece of acrylic with some laser cut out bits. And I've used one fold and glued some ends in. What if I was drawing a design for a knuckle, for a joint, and how it could fit onto some tubing, for instance? Uh, would this drawing be better? Or could I explain myself better using uh, a 3D type of drawing? So here's an exploded isometric of all the parts. So designers, even if roughly, learn how to draw in 3D because it also helps me think about the designs. This washer in the middle wouldn't have occurred to me until I saw it in a 3D view. Here's another example. This base is fairly small and will need to be heavy. So I'm imagining concrete inside a plastic container with the arm cast into the concrete. With its thick and purposeful uh, style, this looks a bit spacey, maybe because it looks like a rover. I could make it look a lot more elegant or refined simply by making the parts thinner and longer. I'm sharing with you some of my very quick and rough drawings where I'm exploring some ideas. So this is thinking on paper. And I'm experimenting with maybe using a spring at the back of the upper arm to help counterbalance the weight of the lampshade. I'm thinking of using a metal upcycled tin and spraying it black. Here are some more super quick sketches. I'm looking at different shapes for bases. So this quick type of drawing is what enables you to be more creative and think and represent ideas quickly and move on. 
Let's quickly look at the three isometric axes. We'll call them left, vertical and right. Have a go at drawing them yourself using the splat. You could imagine these lines as extending towards you as well as away from you. So let's tip that upside down and extend those axes. Think about a coffee table. When we draw the left and right axes, we're really drawing lines that are flat to the ground. They're both horizontal. We also have vertical lines in an isometric drawing. We're going to practice drawing a cylinder together. So grab some scrap paper and draw a line on the right splat or isometric angle. Find those two little marks and line them up to that line that you drew, your axis. Draw a full ellipse. Great. Now we're going to add some thickness. So measure back, say five millimeters, and then center it back where you started. Slide in that direction. And we're going to draw half an ellipse. So imagine if that's the full ellipse, we're just drawing that half. Cool. We need to join the bottom up. You could either use the splat or you could freehand. How shall we draw a small hole in the cylinder? Well, I need to find the center. So I'm replacing the splat and that helps me guess halfway. That's the center. I could freehand a small hole. Or if I wanted it slightly larger, notice the small ellipse has the same two marks. Line them up with your axis, center it, and then draw in the hole. Now that you've done that, let's get started on our drawing. Here's your starting point. Measure across around about 120 millimeters, and then from the bottom of the page, come up 20 millimeters. That's your starting point. So grab your splat and put the point onto the starting point. We're going to make sure it's straight up and down. Look at the edge of the page if you're not sure and compare it to the side of the splat. Great, so mark in your two left and right isometric lines. Excellent. Now extend the line out to the left and the right. Use a very light line, no particular length, just make sure it's very light. On the left line, mark off 70 millimeters and on the right mark off 60 millimeters. Now it's time to put the point of the splat on that mark and draw a left facing line. And on the other mark, we'll draw a line out to the right. Extend both of those lines very lightly. We need to find the point where they cross over. And that point tells us where to stop and start the lines. So we can firm in our base. Not too dark because some of it will be erasing later on. Find these three points on your drawing. One, two, three. We're going to drop a line 10 millimeters down from each of those three points. Now connect the end of those lines and we're finished drawing the piece of timber that we'll be using to make our base. Next we draw a centre line. Find halfway along this line, just guessing is close enough, and let's do the same at the back. Connect those two points with a line, a very light line. That's our centre line. I'm erasing part of the back corner because I'm about to draw over it. Great, so measure 30 millimetres along that guideline, the centre line, and then draw a very light vertical line. Now on that line, let's measure up 30 millimeters for the design that I'm making. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to do is mark off another 90 millimeters. I've kept these arms really short to fit on the page. So the right hand splat line, I'm going to draw a light guideline. That's going to be the center of my um, cylinders. Let's do the same thing on the top one. So I'm drawing a light guideline on the right splat angle. Cool. Place the ellipse down over that point and make sure the point is right in the middle. Then draw the full ellipse. That's looking awesome. Let's do the same thing at the top. Make sure the point is in the middle of the ellipse and then draw in the full ellipse. 
Now it's time to add a little bit of thickness, let's say 5mm, depending on what material you're choosing to use. Let's mark off 5. Now we'll replace the splat back onto the original ellipse. And then we're going to slide in the isometric direction and draw in half. Let's see it again at the top. Line it up, slide, draw half an ellipse. Great. Now we need to draw a line that just touches or is tangent to both of those circles. So line up the top ruler to the circle and then have a look at the bottom. Let's make sure that lines up and then draw in a line. Try and keep yours light until you've finished your drawing. Okay, on the right side of the ellipse, let's draw in a tangent so it lines up the top circle. Swing the ruler at the bottom and draw. On the very outside, and carefully connect those two circles. Next I'm going to just make sure this center line is long enough. Let me extend that a little. Because I'm going to draw a cylinder behind. So mark off an extra 5 millimeters. Let's line it up with the part of the previous one. Slide and draw just half an ellipse. Great. Now from the center of that ellipse or that circle, I'm going to draw a line. You could also turn the splat upside down. We'll give you pretty much the same angle. Let's extend that line. That's going to be the direction of the upper arm. I'm going to mark off 90 millimeters. You could make yours longer depending on how big your page is. Okay, so 90 mil there. Next, to draw a cylinder, let's mark a right hand splat isometric line. Remember next we lined up those black marks. We centered the ellipse on that point. You put it right in the middle and then we drew a full ellipse. Next we mark off our 5 millimeter thickness or however thick you're drawing. Line it up with the, uh, the line, slide and half an ellipse. Now it's time to have a look from the top. Imagine the two arms, they overlap at one point right there. So the two circles we're touching. That circle is really in line with that middle circle. So let's have a go at drawing the tangents. From that circle, must touch that circle. Let's slide and draw. Great. And the far one, same thing. We just draw a tangent line. Now the last line's a bit trickier. We know where it starts on this circle, but we can't see where it ends. So here's the trick. Notice how these two lines are both parallel. Well, the third one will be on the same angle. So we just start from there and draw until it disappears behind that line. So there's our two arms. Cool. Some little lines to finish off there. And I'm going to do a little bit of racing. Some of these lines you wouldn't see unless you're drawing a wireframe or like an X-ray drawing. I'm freehanding a hole at the bottom of this arm. I can just see a hint of the circle there to help me center it. Great. Let's connect this arm to the base. Um, so let's see. I think I'll overlap it behind. So I'm going to go from that very last circle that I drew, and I'm going to extend out another five millimeters. So I could replace it there and then just kind of roughly slide it in that direction. That's probably close enough and draw that in. If you wanted to get it more exact, then why not just draw a guideline along there? Because you know the bottom of the cylinder is also going to touch it. So let's slide to my mark, make sure it's touching the bottom guideline. Now to drop some vertical lines. The first one will be in the center of those. Where it touches the center line of the base, from that point, I'm drawing a line on the right splat angle. And we've already got one on the left. That's the center line. Great. So we draw a line that's tangent to that circle, drops down. Where those two lines cross over, that's how you know where you'll be darkening in. I could draw that bottom piece straight up, but I think I'll angle it. I'm going to draw right from the back of the wooden base forwards. So you can uh, create your own shape there. 
Now I'm darkening in just a little so that you can see the shape we're looking at. So we have a little joiner piece on the base. I'm going to erase that um, hole because over the top of that, I'm going to draw in a wing nut. A wing nut has little flat sections on it that lets me tighten it by hand. There's a small ellipse, and that's one of the wings. And there's another. It might take you a little bit of practice on some scrap to get that right. I found that getting those two angles looking the same is the key. Let's design a way to connect the end of this arm to the lampshade. So I'm looking at that uh, center line. I'm using the two marks on that small ellipse. I'm centering it and drawing a circle. Drop some vertical lines down at each side. Don't worry how long they are at the moment. Where they, where they end, we're going to need to use an isometric angle. So with that straight up and down, use your left one there. Good. And from that point there, let's draw a right. Now, how wide should that be? I'm going to guess around about that wide. I'm making it fairly wide. All right, so from the front, we've got a U shape. But to add some thickness to the inside, I'll need to add some more lines. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So line up and slide just a few millimeters down. So I'm copying the angle of those lines. And to make it look 3D, there's one line that's missing right there. Uh, if you wanted to, you could draw an extra hole or head of a screw or something there. Cool. So <clears throat> let's just erase that and draw a small wing nut. I wonder what you'll use to attach um, your shade to the to the um, design that you've come up with. I'm rounding off those sharp corners so that it looks like a piece of acrylic strip that's been folded. Now for my lampshade, I'm choosing to use an ellipse for the top. You could come up with some incredible shape of your own design. Let's just keep it simple. From the center, let's drop a vertical line down. That's just a light guideline. Let's say we measured off 40 millimeters. And we could draw, um, we could connect that to come up with a very simple cylindrical shape. Or I could sketch a larger ellipse and then join that if you want more of a classic look. Now, luckily, I have um, a large demonstrator splat to use. So I'm going to repeat that using my larger ellipse. Your teacher might have ellipse guides that you could possibly use. So I'm centering the large ellipse on that point. It looks like it's going to overlap my drawing. So I'm going to erase that from right from the start, save me rubbing it out later. Now let's draw this. Will I draw the whole ellipse or half? Half, but I'm drawing a little more than half just to make sure that I can see where I'm joining that to. And then I'll erase that last little bit later. Great, so we're almost there. We have a very long lampshade. Wonder what it would look like with a shorter lampshade. Here I am adding some wood grain. Make sure your lines aren't um, all the same. You've got to notice a little bit of wave and the gaps vary and that sort of thing. So a little bit of wood grain, just really lightly with a sharp pencil. And on the base, let's make it look um, a little bit knotty because radiata pine, that lighter colored timber, is um, has lots of knots and wavy grain. So let's draw some end grain there. And now it's time to firm in all of your lines if you've drawn lightly. Around the outside is an especially dark line called a cutting line. So congratulations, your drawing should be popping. Well done on completing the standard drawing. Uh, with those same skills, you can start an experiment with some different designs. This um, is drawn in the same way. I've drawn three circles on the page and connected them with tangent lines. It's exactly the same way of drawing. I've just had them in different positions. And now I'm experimenting with a different kind of design. I've separated two arms. And in between there, I'm looking at a different shade or reflector type. And I've almost got a design here. Not totally happy with that. I'm going to work on that a little further. 
and um, then I'm going to add a little bit of color. So I've got a design. I'm going to use some art markers because it's really a quick way to splash in a bit of color. I would suggest using just color pencils uh, on your design. And if you wanted to do a practice, then ask your teacher to make a photocopy of your final drawing so you're not practicing on your actual drawing. So there's a little bit of uh, a bit of fun, a few different colors, just to show the different components there. I'm tidying that up by using some felt tip. Notice the darker line right around the outside. This is one of the best projects that I've seen to practice your design and drawing skills. Thanks for joining in. I'm Glennie D and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.